Testing, testing. You're coming through clear. Coming through clear. Oh, oh yeah, I need to. Yeah, yeah. I I changed uh, my headphones to. I I changed. I mean, I have a script that like does a like command. Wait, no. Oh, I think it works. Can you do it again? Can you talk again? I can talk again. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, okay. Because I'm I'm on. I don't know if I last time Brave was broken. I think I talked about this. My Brave just completely shit the bed. I could uh, I could send the the screenshot I think in the chat. Um, but basically, like like it it looked like graphical glitches. Basically, um, let me open this. I'll send I'll send a couple. But basically, I, I removed it um, using you know zipper remove, and then I reinstalled it. And now it's it's fine, uh, and, and it works. But um, and and the reason why Firefox for some reason if uh, I cannot set the the output the default, so I have to manually go and open up Discord and say uh, change the output to my headphones or change the output to whatever. Uh, but on Chrome I can set it to default and then I can hit my my dmenu command uh, that does a, a dmenu script so I can set my output to my headphones or speakers or other. Um, but then strawberry and only strawberry because I make it use uh, I get when the settings I made it use also in which in my music player and that one sometimes won't like probably because of pipe wire problem but it won't use my right output but Chrome basically all the time it uses the right output and even Firefox if I when it comes down to uh, not discord like YouTube for example you using pipe wire uh, well, a default on uh, on SUS, yeah. Well, because you can use something like QPW graph, I think is what it's called, to set like profiles. Then you could just um, hit a button and it would go to the previous profile, which you were doing before, and it would just route the audio exactly mm. where you want it to go. Interesting. Kind of, kind of like Jack. Do you have to? Do you have to? Don't you have to like manually like? For example, let's say I have like a new program. A new music player wouldn't I have to like manually go in every time and set the new program to the, the right output? The first time, after after the after you done it once, you could save that profile, and then it's just a matter of selecting the profile in the in the program. Now you, I don't know if there's a way to do that from like the command line via script or whatever. So you would have to install the application and then open the application every time you wanted to do that profile, but. It might save you from having to do it per application. I mean, it, it works mostly. Basically, what I have to do is I have to hit... I have to basically go back and forth. Like, for example, I would hit my key binding and I set it to my... I set it to my headphones, set it to my speaker, set it to my headphones, and usually that works. There's no problem. But that's just the, the only one that has a problem is strawberry. The rest is just it works on the first time. Which is a shame because strawberry is like a really good music player. What do you use as a music player? Um I use NC Spot. Um so, so I've been having this problem and it happened again today. And I thought I had it solved where OBS will not record one of my monitors. Like it'll record oh, the other two monitors, but it won't record the main monitor. And it's very confusing. I thought it was the that I was using the Hyperland portal that was in the OpenSUSE repositories. Um, and that one's older. So I uninstalled that and built the one that's, you know, the Git version from source. And it worked for a little while. And now it's back to doing what it was before, which is fantastic. I did finally get to do work, but I had to reboot. Yeah. <laughs> As is usual, Wayland is gonna screw me over. Are you on Wayland right now? I thought you were on Xmodat or something. No, nah, I'm using Hyperland. Have been for about a week. Ah. Uh. I blame Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> is this a new challenge? Well, he he said he was gonna go on a Wayland challenge, so I decided to join him. Um, oh, because okay. he, he was nice enough to, um, allow me to change color schemes. 
Oh, and I did I did a thing in. Uh, well, I'll send a screenshot of what happened in, in Brave the uh, the other week, and I had to reinstall Brave. But I I did a thing with uh, OBS. I'll I'll just send a screenshot. Basically, I have multiple monitor. So oh yeah, I need to disable my camera so that it it works in OBS. That's something I, I still haven't figured out the thing to be able to use multiple camera. Um, I tried to make it work and it didn't. Have you tried setting up the V4L loopback thing? Yeah, I have it installed, but for some reason... Oh yeah, I, 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 I watched a Brody Robertson video. You have to edit the config file in OBS to be able to use a, a, VS, a V4L4 loopback as a source. You can't choose it in the menu. That's what the Brody Robertson video say, and I, I mean, usually he has an answer. But yeah, let me just... Um, actually, I could use... I, I'll, I'll take a screenshot. I have multiple monitor, and I like to like take videos of me with multiple monitor. So you can't so, take a screenshot and have your webcam go on at the same time. That sounds like a precisely Linux uh, capability. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look at this. I have it so I, I can uh, have all my monitors in a single view with my camera on top. That way, I can like show. Um, like I can I can do like video showcases of like multiple. For example, like the workspace back and forth thing uh, script that I did the video. Well, I, I can show all of the things. And also what's really cool is that I, I, can, I can use it as a OBS camera. Which means, I, because the thing is you, you cannot screen share in Discord multiple screens. So right now, let me, let me try this. I'm going to enable the virtual camera with multiple monitor and this. And now I'm going to go in Discord. I'm going to choose it. And I'm going to be able to screen share me and all the screens at the same time in a single view, which is not something you can do in Discord by default. So let me check output device. Wait a second. Uh, we know video. Yeah. Video, OBS virtual camera, test video. Oh, it looks like it's working. Okay, let's try it. Tell me if this works. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's re it's split. It's split by Discord. Okay, can you, you guys see the flip, right? Yeah, we see it. Is it flipped? Like readable text? Well, it's really Does small. Discord... <laughs> no, I can't. It... On my oh, side, I... it's flipped. Is it flipped? Like, all this, all the text is flipped, and everything is flipped. Is it flipped on my side? Um... It reads. It reads right. Is it? Oh, it's not flipped on. Okay. So I think for this will be the last lug where we just kind of wing it, and then from now on we'll. I'll put up a poll before the next one. We'll choose a topic. That way we have a dedicated topic. Um, what would you guys think of like doing... Because yeah, you guys have seen Linux Saloon. It used to be Big Daddy Linux. They, they took it over. Every once in a while, they do a... Um, like a, a distro t group review thing. Where they'll... You know, for the next one, they'll say, well, we're all going to take a look at OpenSUSE, whatever. Or we're going to take a look at the next version of NixOS or whatever. And uh, would you guys think of doing that every once in a while? We wouldn't do it every time because that'd be kind of boring. Well, it depends. I can't afford switching OSs all the time, but I, they, I could, they make I could virtual try. machines for a reason. It doesn't have to be. On oh, hardware. okay. I I I thought you went like a challenge, like no, actually no, 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 trying no. it out. No, you can just install it in a virtual machine or even in DistroBox if you wanted to. Actually, I've been thinking about switching off of uh, OpenSUSE a little bit. Don't do it. Like right now, if I do a zipper dup, I have like a bunch of problems. Like it, it says this thing is needed by, because I'm using a bunch of home like user repository yeah, stuff I have the or same... stuff. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. Yeah, I mean, I, had, I, 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 did, a, I, I did a dup, uh, I did a zipper, hmm? uh, no, up instead of dup. And that one doesn't do the problem because it doesn't do a, a disk update. So it doesn't try to upgrade two different. Just uh, do repos or something. So just do. Well, dash, I didn't restart dash. yet. So I don't know if I broke my system. So if you just do dash dash allow vendor change, a lot of that stuff goes away. Um, it doesn't mean that it's always going to go away, but sometimes it will go away. If you do dash dash vendor yeah. ch allow vendor change or something like that. I'm gonna try zipper dot right now because that was yesterday. So maybe it, it got out of. Um, well, what's in your um, what's in your like repository? Your sources. Oh, my sources. I have too many. <laughs> I have too many. It takes so well, long to load every time. I, I have, I, I need to check. Go ahead, W. Uh, right now, I just did a zipper dub though, so it's going to take a while, but I can, what's the comment to list the repos? 
Yeah, because I accidentally added like Max Susie, or I think it was Max Susie, and it was completely destroying everything. It was like day four of my uh, Susie challenge. Was like I had like a total Linus situation of oh, you want me to upgrade the system? Oh, I need to remove your entire desktop environment and like half of your applications. And I'm like, no, we're not we're not pulling a Linus here. All right. Yeah, right now it's telling me um, uh, solution one: install readline doc from OBS or conserve obsolete. I don't know. Uh, it's something from from which uh, I'll, I'll try. Um, I'll do the thing. Uh, then allow vendor change. Let's do it. And yeah. Um, check if it's if it's able to oh god it's switching everything to obs a couple to pac-man uh i think it's fine ob um zipper does this that. is a lot of stuff 600 i just did an update yesterday it's saying it's gonna update 600 packages that seems like it's a deleting lot a bunch of stuff oh no uh, that's that's, that's typical fine. for for tumbleweed that happens a lot if you wait a few days you're gonna get five or six hundred um updates because it's just yesterday the way i just works. did an up instead of up because i otherwise it wouldn't okay. i guess i can try this i don't know i don't know if it would remove my codex by doing this but i i can try this later i'm not gonna do that now but yeah uh, let me uh what's a zipper command to list uh um repo repos list zipper repos Oh, Zipper repos details. Okay, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> but when it comes out to the through uh, Yast to check my software sources and whatnot, and I think it was what's his name Zenith. This is a in the, lot in the in the Discord channel. Let me just. We went uh... through. I showed him my sources, and he absolutely was like, "Bro, what are you doing?" And I'm like, "I don't know what I'm doing." Like, I have a ton. It's, of it's open Susa. Yeah, I have a ton of repos too. Once you start using OPI to install stuff, you're gonna get a lot. Um, yeah, it, uh, you just learn to. The thing with OPI is that sometimes you have stuff that's way out of version, and you you can't really tell. Well, that's, in that's my case, my repos right now. yeah, in my case, it was uh, Media Codex. I was starting to do some recording in that for the video that I was gonna post, and I didn't have the Media Codex to view the stuff I even had on my system, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Some of the distros, they don't ship those for, like, legal reasons and whatnot. So I was like, all right, so, like, Google how to install codecs. Yeah, codex. Don't do that. Um, that's how I accidentally added that repo is because I just happened to click a one-click install from the Suzy software that you get through the web browser that had that repo in it that just jacked up my whole system. Uh, just do OPI codex. Yeah, I learned that, too, after I unbricked my system. Well, I, I say bricked. You could still totally use the system. Like, KDE was still working perfectly fine. Like, you just couldn't update the system because you were in an indefinite loop of choosing solutions that it couldn't figure out. I think, like, I didn't update for, like, almost a month. Because <laughs> I just well, I mean, forgot. I just didn't. I, I, know, I don't update often. I don't think about it. Well, I agree. I, I update once a month on most of my stuff. Uh, we're going to see the laptop... Yeah, I, I'm on a different laptop because I can't be bothered to walk across the room to go get it. But um, the laptop I just traveled with because I just got back from a work business trip. I got to go next week for another one. Um, I'm literally not going to update it for two weeks. And that's the one with Tumbleweed on it. And then we're going to see when I do a zipper dump after I get back in two weeks, what's going to happen. Because Arch always grenaded on me if you didn't update it for like a week. And so far, Zipper seems a lot more competent than Pac-Man is you, about that. So. You're going to be fine. So I did, well, I mean, you should be fine. I'm not going to guarantee anything. But I did a rollback all the way back to, like, November, just a couple weeks ago. Um, and had to do all the updates from then. It was, like, 1,700 updates uh, compiled and worked just fine. Um, and there was a couple errors, but I did the law vendor change. Because the thing about OpenSUSE is, is they move the packages around to different repositories. It's the most weird thing that they do and i don't know why they do it they do it every time <coughs> so <coughs> excuse me they they move them around so you always get these errors uh, um, sometimes you get the, depends on how many repositories you have um, they move things around and then you have to do the thing that you have to do but i've never had a single problem in over 200 days 
and that that rollback that I did was just like it took a long time because zipper is slow as fuck, but um, it was it is that. Eh. Although it's not as slow as I remember it back when I played with it in a virtual machine and whatnot, like it feels like it's almost quicker than DNF. Maybe I'm just deranged and just tired, but I th oh so I think that the mirrors for DNF and zipper are about the same. Where DNF yeah. wins is that it allows parallel downloads. So it goes faster because of that. Zipper still doesn't allow parallel downloads and probably never will at this point. They've been working on this since 2016. Alias, I mean, personally, the thing I, I find the slowest is the fact that it refreshes every single time you do a command. Like, I just want to search a repo. Like, I don't care about refreshing. You can it, turn... just, it doesn't even yeah, refresh. It checks if, it's, if it has to refresh so they can tell you to refresh it. Which is so stupid. You like, can... don't do not do that. So basically, I have an alias that says PKG search. And I just alias is this to zipper dash dash no refresh space search. And I use that for searching because I never want to, I don't I don't care, right? I'm searching. Well, I'm like, still able to search in zipper without it, but yeah. I can still search in zipper without refreshing. It just shows you the, hey, you need to refresh your things. And yeah, I'm like, me, yeah, I don't like, want to like, right now. I do, I'll do it later. If I do zipper, let, let me do time. Uh, that's the command, right? That tells you how long it takes. I'm I always just did zipper search, search and then package name. Then uh, how about, uh, uh, what about uh, strawberry? Zipper search strawberry. Oh, I just updated earlier. It's not going to do it. Um, but it, like it, it would take like at least like a good five seconds. Just to like search. Okay. At minimum. But if I do no search, it does like one second. Because it, it has to go to like every repo and check. Is it yeah. up to date? But not even refresh it. It doesn't even refresh it. Like it's so weird. Hmm. In certain yeah, situations, kind of weird, you though. can use dash dash no refresh, but it's not in everything. Yeah, that's why Alice is it to uh, PG search. Because I, I mean, I do want to refresh it if I'm going to install something. But I don't, I don't care if I'm searching for a package. Because like, what's the chance that the package was not in the distro and now they added it and like like in the last hour like that doesn't make any sense actually actually i don't even think it actually refreshed the package I, I think it checks if it's up to date or not and tells you you should run this command you could just run I, a I, uh like a cron job once every 12 hours to refresh your repositories and then it would never ask you again yeah but uh -uh. I, I found it sometimes it, it takes like less than an hour and it asks you again like it, it does a check again. <laughs> we have all these people listening to us, and uh, all you guys are listening to is a bunch of open Susa talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, talking about that, I, I wanted to try something else, I think. I've, I've been thinking maybe Void or something really minimal, because I have an iTree build. But I, I kind of want to try be, like porting it over to something with like... I want to try just not using any KDE software, because I use Kate, I use Dolphin, I use a bunch of like KDE software. And I, I use a, a login login manager, right? And I want to try just using uh, like just like super bare bone, like just like a like you know like a TTY install, and I just add my dot files, I install iTree, and I try to keep it as slim as possible. Try to get like 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 a dot files that just do what I want. Just to because right now I'm depending on so much like KDE software and stuff, and it's like it's a little bit, I don't know. I want I want to try out. Just minimalism a little bit more. Why void? I feel like it's a little bit weird right now. What? Why void? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I could I could do arch. I don't know, but uh, I, mean, I could do Oberon. <laughs> I are don't you, know. I, you, I could do anything minimal. Are you Are you going That's to use normal. muscle? Or are you going to stick with glibc? Or <laughs> I mean, how minimal are you going to go? I, <laughs> I I probably I probably do it like start normal. X from the terminal. Glibc, I think. I just, I just wanted to like people recommend me like a, like a, like a, a distro tryout. I don't know, like, like a minimal distro that you install is like basically just a TTY. You know, you know these kind of like void, arch, whatever. I, I think I'm probably going to, cause I, I have like, I think I left out like. 300, 500, I don't remember how much gigabyte I've left at the end of my SSD, but I have some empty space at the end, so I, I'm thinking maybe I could uh, 
draw out something. Because yeah, technically I could like keep, stay on OpenSUSE, like remove the login manager, remove KD, like, but it's it's kind of like hard. So I've been thinking like, cause, like if you look at my home directory, there's so much stuff, and it's not just stuff that I use; it's a bunch of crap. I I want to like have I don't know why maybe I'm weird, but I want like a distro that's like super minimal, like an Arch style distro. Well, I want to put my dot files there with iTree. You just you're... have my dot files and nothing else, so I can see it clearly and be like, okay, this is my dot files, this is my stuff, and this is what I use. And I can try out software and because when I'm on SUSE, what I do usually is that I oh this is cool software, I'll just install it. You know, I just do that. Kind of like probably Matt does to try out stuff. Or pretty much every Linux YouTuber does this, right? They're like they install really a complex. bunch of stuff, it makes a mess. I, but I don't know, I feel like try I, I feel like having a dis second distro just to put my dot files on there. Have like a super streamlined minimal version of my of my stuff art should be i guess i could just install that. it on my on my laptop because i do have a laptop i could install like a, like a void or whatever you see you were saying something john oh just art should be easier to do that what he's talking about doing just to have a very very minimal uh but everything still works art should be easier to do that if you're just trying to go to your base base the very minimal you could possibly have then just do arch void is cool there's a lot of uh interesting things about it but it, you do have you run into hardware problems you run into setup problems you run up to stuff that's not available in the uh, repos yeah that's probably well, the, the biggest problem yeah, so if you're trying, if you're trying to just like yeah, I, didn't think of that. I mean it's cool void is cool i've never i've never used it i've never installed it so i'm not an expert but like just looking at it read the documentation and talking to other people it's a cool system but if if you're trying to just like for practical purposes just have a minimal system, you're talking about your dot files and it's just clean. Like why I think you're talking about a window manager, maybe i3 or something, it's just clean, then just do arch. Yeah, just, arch really arch clean. you can arch you could lose your mind getting like as close to the metal as you possibly want to get and configuring it to configure it to you can make arch, you can make it hard. <laughs> if you want to, you can make it super hard. But if you just want to get clean and bare metal, just do Arch or like an Arch base without SystemD or something like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe weird... Ardex probably. But... Ardex or Oberon. Cool. Oberon looks super cool. I had it installed in my system at some point, but then I realized that it probably shouldn't be my first distro, so I switched to OpenSUSE. And then, but now I feel like OpenSUSE is actually like bringing me down. It helped me go to the point where now I feel very, very well with iTree and I haven't booted into KD in months. And now I feel like I should probably coming back to it. That's what I, I told myself. I said, okay, I'll... I'll I was like, okay, I'm going to... Because what I wanted to do at first was to use LARPs, right? The, the DWM build of, of Luke Smith. But I wanted to use it not on Artix or uh, Arch. I wanted to use it on... Uh, uh, Oberon, which is a special version, it's systemd free, but it uses uh, it uses something with six and it. it's S6, I think. It's like um, an extension of uh, Suit 6 or something, like, it's a thing like that. But it's like a, an init system that's really cool. It has like even more, it has like a tree of dependencies of like the, it's a bit like systemd, but without systemd. Like it has like you, you, your processes can depend on other processes, but it's made in a way that's not bloated like systemd. So it's it's really cool. Um, but I ha I know nothing about it. But I wanted to try it out. But the thing is that uh, LARBs doesn't work on it because they use completely different package names. It's not like Artix where they use it like basically they just clone um, all the packages of Arch. They they change the name of some of that stuff, and I. Yeah, I was in a TTY, I didn't even install anything because I was like, okay, I want LARP. So I was just in a TTY trying to like fix the, the script, make it work. And I was like, okay, this is not a good ex first experience. I'm just going to go with OpenSUSE, but I will come back. So now I kind of feel like I should probably coming back now because I, I did tell myself, I did swear to myself I would come back to Oberon after going with SUSE. So I think I should go. And it's an Arch base and it has a lot of software and I think you can enable, you can use the AUR. So I, I think... I think that's a good idea. I mean, it would be on a second partition anyway. What's the worst that can happen? You could always yeah, just so. install Gentoo. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> then then you then you have a full control over everything. You could even go as minimal what's as you the, want. No Bluetooth. What's the easy to install Gentoo thing? Redcore. Gives you like an All easy browser for ten days. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. 
That's a good plan. There's there's red core, but there's another one I've I've seen. Just calculating. Um, I think it's like a too. like a flower petal. I I think it's. Uh, Some someone just said uh, it. Fun too. That is fun. Fun too's there, and then there's, no, no, it's an, the, there's the another one. YouTuber that uh, Air Max did a video on it. You know the French YouTuber that speaks English did the the really good video on the Tiki G kernel. Let me try to find it. So uh, if you're gonna use Gen two, just use Gen two. Don't Nobody, use uh, Linux. Script, don't use Red Core. It'll yeah. screw you over in the long run. Yeah. Let's say what Matt has a whole series on Red Core. Hey, it's not it's not bad. Just choose a choose a package manager if you're gonna use it. Don't either stick with Sisyphus or don't use Sisyphus at all. Don't mix and match because mix and matching is bad. Uh, but they just had a, they just had a, more, a recent release red core did um and they have a release they were going to have i don't know if it actually made it in or not but uh they did a qtile version of it this time and it's using my qtile def, uh, configuration files <laughs> well, that's cool what? <laughs> yeah using your like, yeah, setup yeah the dev asked me to do a so, do a, a, a rice this form this is the official the linux cat this distro this yeah. is like dtos linux but for the linux there you go if if it made it in i don't know if it did i haven't used it so but it was supposedly have made it in. You should unironically like have like a LARBs like thing or something. I... Like, you, <laughs> you have you have settings for like so many different window managers. Like personally what I want is to like have a setup for at least DWM and iTree and I wanna be able to switch between them. And um maybe at some point make it like my like an easy installer script. But like I don't know, like, your setup is probably really cool. Why don't you, like, I think you have even, like, a script to change the, the theme on the fly with certain stuff. Well, I like, I, I'm I, pretty sure a lot of people would like using your setup. So, like, Luke does his his stuff based on a certain operating system, so he has it for Arch and for Void, for Void, I think. And I could make like, a OpenSUSE distro. Well, I could do for OpenSUSE, but nobody uses OpenSUSE, except for the people in my, my server, so... I mean, it's it's yeah, a, a very it small niche thing. I don't know. Maybe I will someday. I, I tried it when I did uh, when I was on Arch. I wrote a script to do do so, um, and never updated it ever again. I published <laughs> it. It was there, but I never updated it again. Like I, I don't think you I don't could advertise do... it enough. I think you would have to like. Do you, do you do you guys use a lot of other people's config files, or do you? You I, I, look, often... I look at I, I mean I, I'm not judging I don't know I don't know because I look at other people's and I'm like oh that's really cool I look at Matt's like that's cool and then I just made my own every window yeah, manager gonna, like, every window manager that I've ever paste. used I've what's, what's that? I've stolen from somebody else so that's how I learned i3 it's how I learned dwm it's how I learned uh, bspwm you still, still, learning, you still, you still made it your own right you well, still yeah that's how I learned so. I, I when I going into DWM I knew no C whatsoever so I downloaded LARBs and yeah. that's how I learned ever you know how to do DWM it got me into C um, with Qtile someone on Twitter shared me their their configuration file and that's where I started off learning Python and, and learning how to yeah. do do Qtile that's so it's just how I do it. it's it's easier for me to start off with a base that I can use and just kind of get oh, into yeah, it. Yeah. Than having to start no, I, off that's, fresh. That's the thing I like oh yeah, for free. sure. I I yeah. I mean, I I didn't mean like oh, you just got a blank uh, text editor and just you know farted it out. No, no, no. You, you got to look at somebody else's stuff to get started for sure. Even mm -hmm. if you know you know what you're doing and kind of what you have in mind, having somebody else's space. I reuse my own code all the time and then refactor it into something else on my project. So I was just curious because I I don't know. I mean, I I guess I don't know that many people, but I wasn't sure if, like you guys are just. You know, if that's a common thing, we're just it's, using I, 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 config files everywhere. Because I've looked at his too, and I didn't. I wasn't that interested. I am personally. One who, I don't use a default. I, I think I usually I use, just grab oh, a hold video. on a second, Nuggy Bus. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Silent Bob. Oh, okay. For me, it's one of those where like I usually will. I do is I'll go find like a video from like DT or Linux Dabbler or a couple others, and I usually would just start by looking at their video, and I'd copy a lot of the, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Then I'd kind of also just add my own stuff in as I went. I was always kind of just a copy somebody else, but edit on the fly. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Who did you say? Linux Dabbler? I never heard of. 
Uh, big, I mean, it's really, he was a really good one. That's how I learned like all of what I know about DWM. Yeah. If you, if you like watching Debian stuff, his stuff is really good. He doesn't make very many videos because he has kids and um, doesn't have a lot of time to make videos. But Mike's awesome. He's a real good guy. Uh, what were you going to say, Nuggy Bus? Oh, yeah. So for iTree, I actually started with just stock iTree. But the thing about stock iTree is that you basically have like an environment that actually works. It's not like DWM or something. And that's the thing I like about iTree is that I think anyone can just start using it. It's pretty, I would say decent defaults and you open up the man page and you have like the defaults there and it, it, that's how I basically started up using it and then very rapidly I started modifying it and modifying it and modifying it little by little and I got it to a point where I, I, I liked it pretty, pretty well and then I started basically stealing a bunch of stuff from other people's uh, config like for example I, I, I went all the way back in the history to the last point in uh, Luke's Larbs, where it was still i3 before he nuked it, and um, because he was on i3 before, and I just steal a bunch of stuff from there. Um, and um, then I look at people every time there's you know, I go on Unix porn every time there's one that says i3, I click on it, I check if there's a dot file, and if there is, I go through it rapidly. If there's anything cool, yep. uh, like for I example, the there's a key binding to uh, force quit instead of just asking the application to quit, or you know, a bunch of stuff like there's. Or, for example, like being able to pop up my camera in the corner um, of my screen. Um, that's also stolen from uh, Luke's. There, there's a bunch of really cool things you can you can steal from other people's uh, stuff. Yeah, but, I, I'm not, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. I was just curious if you guys are like, um, or if it was common to just like this is somebody else's setup and I'm going to use it exact. Um, but yeah, but which I wouldn't assume it would be because Linux people tend to be. Uh, uh, they like to tinker, so nobody's just going to copy and paste anything. I mean, they might they might clone the repo, but they're going to make it their own anyway. So I was just curious. My first that's how, I, that's, that, that's how I got into coding when I first started. Is I figured out how to look at somebody's source code. Yeah, my just first, on like a, on a browser. My first uh, usage of a window manager was with Regolith. That's how I got into i three, and um, that guy that was ages and ages ago, but. My, why that was fascinating for me was that it allowed me to basically use a window manager but without losing all the you know stuff that I was used to when I used the desktop so I had a settings panel and was able to set wallpapers that direction and stuff and that, that was a good you know first experience for me into the window manager sphere and it didn't last very long because I was like because if you ever use regular you can get kind of it, you can be very constrained by the way they do things, especially, I mean, it wasn't as bad when, when I'd used it, but it's way worse now. And not worse isn't bad, but worse is in, it, it changes i3 so much that they, like, all of the config files are in different places, and it's very, very segmented and stuff, so it's not very, it's basically not how you would do i3 if you're going to do it from, you know, uh, from your, from the ground up, so. Um, yeah, I agree. It's just... The only time I think I'll grab a actual config and just to use it is if I'm like playing with a window manager and I want to go from like stock to like really customized, and it'll only be for maybe like an hour or two. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll probably so, uh... do the same thing with EWW because I cannot get EWW to start from the ground up. So I'm going to have to steal somebody else's to actually use. I'm sorry, who was who was who was talking that I overrode? I overrode. Let's see. That's me. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, what I did for somebody, uh, I think it was on IRC, he said, uh, you got to use a i I3. You know, it's really cool. So I looked up a video on how to use i3, and uh, the guy went through step by step what everything in the config file did, and he made some changes to it. So I was able to see, you know, get a little tutorial on how to use how to use a window manager right from the get go. My second highest viewed video is actually a tutorial on i3. <laughs> um, well, it's so. such an easy to get into window manager. It only makes sense. Well, and it never goes out of like like B BSPWM goes in and out of popularity, and Qtal goes in and out of popular popularity, and now Hyperland's here, and eventually Hyperland will go out of popular popularity as well because there'll be something else different. But i3 just kind of stays around. And it's constantly oh. developed. They're always adding new features. 
and and it's, it's just a very rock solid window manager that if you want to get into window managers it's definitely one that i'd recommend because not only does it have not only does it do everything well but the documentation is just the best documentation you've ever you're ever going to find it's just so good yeah, yeah i'm not i'm not a yeah. window manager guy but i3 was the one that i figured i'd give it a shot you know uh but i3 was the one that i chose to like see if i was going to like this just because of the documentation what do you use well uh, right now i'm on pop so you're using so cosmic Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm using Cosmic, um, but that that's for different reasons, um, besides other than just like the workflow. But um, I when I was I was a Fedora guy for a long time. I think I still say I'm a Fedora guy, but um, but I tried this years ago. I tried to win a manage, and I think last year I was trying it. I think I was watching one of your videos, Matt, where you were like, "This is awesome," and I was like, "Man, that looks pretty sweet." I like the workflow, um, but I went to i3 just because the documentation was great. It was easier for me to follow. Because I could go look through it and look at the key bindings and all that stuff. Because, um, like, Swayze, Swayze got pretty good documentation, too. Someone else is going to break in there. Who was, who was talking? Um, no I was just going to make a comment. Be, uh, you, you know how, you know, BSPWM had a little resurgence there because DT shouted it out for a little bit. Yeah. yeah, he's he he was there for a while when he was doing his window manager things, you know, switching back and forth. He's pretty much settled on Xmonad now. For what what's he, which very interesting. I'm, and I want to talk to him about this next time I ha I have him uh, in Discord somewhere. Uh, you guys noticed that DT hasn't done anything with a Wayland compositor at all, like zero <laughs> videos. Ah, um, uh, yeah. yeah, I need to start watching him. Like he but, hasn't he hasn't touched Hyperland. He didn't. I don't think he's ever done a sway video. Um, he he's just firmly like, like he doesn't even he hasn't even really ranted about Wayland. Like you like he's not anti Wayland. He just hasn't covered it at all. And that's I mean I, just, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very knowing curious. Derek, he's probably checked out Wayland in his free time, and he just it's one of those he sees the appeal but just doesn't like it himself. It could be. He may not have anything to add. Because I. From what I can kind of gather, just, you know, kind of watching his videos and seeing his opinions on different stuff, I can kind of guess that he probably likes Wayland and all, just doesn't particularly care, so he just sticks to X-Monad like he likes. Well, as a content creator, I know that I'm always trolling for content, so it's just surprised me sometimes that he hasn't made some content on it, um, even if it's negative content, because he does a good rant just like anybody else does. It was just very surprising. Like He's, he's like the second biggest linux youtuber out there and just hasn't covered it at all um nobody can troll for views quite though quite like brody <laughs> <laughs> brody's just a, he's just a smooth criminal with that one he's oh, yeah. giving the whaling chill just just pay attention to the tech over t feed coming up i think two weeks from now uh there'll be a very familiar face on there talking about wayland and xmonad and or and wayland uh, that's and <laughs> yeah, I like Brody. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah, he's a good, he's a very good guy. Um, yeah. Misses. I misses. Uh, I misses like stuff about configuring like stuff because he 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 it was really good. Like when he reviewed software and whatnot. Mm. Yeah, he's he gotten into, that, he's gotten into news. He, he did really good videos. He went in depth, but he he went like he was one of the best one. Like he was very clearly inspired. I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but at first he was basically like uh he was he was shouted out by um in the early beginning he was shouted out by Luke Smith. And that's one of the reasons why he got like popular, and and that kind of stuff. But and he was doing like you know Luke Smith type of videos, like useful going about software. Here's what here's how to do certain things, and then like slowly but surely now he's like basically just like doing like I don't know like history stuff. You know, like I mean it's fine, but. He does all like talking head videos and whatnot, and I don't mind them sometimes. I'll turn them on in the background and just listen to him because I always kind of curious what his opinion is on on things because he does a pretty good job summarizing different topics and whatnot. And I did like his Wayland Shill video. I got a good laugh out of that. That's very good. I I like it when he does. Um, there's a couple of channels that I listen to that probably are not Linux uh, uh, experts and they're not. Um, like, G what is it, DJ Ware? Uh, like, that guy's yeah, real yeah. technical. I like his stuff because it's technical. And I like oh. his opinions on, like, big picture industry stuff. But I like Brody because he's always talking about something that maybe I didn't hear about. Or if he is talking about it, like, he goes way more in depth than I'm, I have time to go look for it. So 
Yeah, I, I don't mean, know where I, he finds you know, his. I, I know he gets a lot of his topics from Reddit, but uh, some of yeah, some I, don't, of I, don't, I don't always have the time to go dig through that stuff. Just like when Matt shows up with a video that uh, is something that I'm probably not going to use, and I'm not that interested in it per se. I still watch the video and give it a thumbs up because it's like, well, I've never heard of that piece of software before. He went and looked at it and gave me a little video on it, and like, oh, that's cool. I found a couple things that I thought were useful, but. You know, but that's that is a lot of the reason why I watch Matt's channel is he's talking about something that I maybe didn't have to go time. It's saving me time on a particular topic, so I like those. I don't know. That's just me though. And I got another piece of software for a video. It was going to be posted tonight, but I think I'll post this tonight instead. Uh, that will be like that. That probably nobody will use, um, especially since so it's like half broken. But it'll be fun to post about anyways. Um, I like half broken it, things. Oh, those are the best. Can we get yeah. a spoiler? Uh -huh. It smells like beaver. <laughs> Demonetized. Uh, the the name of it's called Beaver Notes, so you can check that out if you want to. It's it the video's re video is recorded and halfway through halfway uh, edited. I was gonna like I said I was gonna post it tonight, but I think I'll post the log tonight if if this goes, uh, you know, uh, just post this and uh, people can watch it. I, probably from now on, if if I can get my Wayland woes to, you know, stop, please, I beg you, Wayland, stop hating me so much. Um, <laughs> if I, if I can get the get that all fixed, I'll probably end up start streaming this so we can have kind of like a, a chat going alongside. Uh, but as of right now, I'm just kind of recording because this is kind of like a test, another test run. But, um, yeah, I. We'll end up po posting that on on Sunday, but I, I find these applications like um, a lot of the stuff I I get like from OMG Ubuntu and stuff like this. I could open up in a tab because you guys wonder how I always have so many tabs. Like right now I have oh hell I don't know, but actually I have to see. So I have like let's see eight, eighteen, thirty four, nine, eleven, two, and seven. Uh, those are the tabs that I have open, and half of those are the thirty four at least are all video ideas. And that's what I do when I find somebody like blogs about an, an application somewhere random. I will open up a tab, send it to the proper workspace, put it in its in its tab group or tab stack in Vivaldi, and then it will just live there forever. So, for example, I have uh, about 10 tabs open that just have to do with applications. Some of them, by the way, have been open for two years at least. Like, th th there's one that's, here. That's crazy. So there are <laughs> too many tabs too, man. It's crazy. And there, I have them spread in two browsers. So impressive. There's yeah, a, I, I, it's impressive. But that's uh, crazy. It is crazy. So I have one here called Vicun, Vicunja, V-I-K-U-N-J-A. -A. It's a, it's a self-hostable to-do list application and it looks awesome, but it requires quite a bit of like work around and actually over to get working. And so I can't do the video until I have the time to sit around it. So it's just been sitting there in in a, in a tab probably since 2022 or so. It's been there for a while. I don't even, at this point, it may not even be still being updated. <laughs> what's, what's the reason? What's the, yeah, probably not. What's, what's the reasoning behind uh, like keeping it in a tab instead of just like putting okay. it in a markdown file or something? Because I lose, I lose the markdown file, or I wouldn't look at it. By having them in uh, my face, I like, I can. They're here. I know that they're here, and and every day I'll just come look through these tabs and know that they're there. If they were in a markdown file, I'd either lose the markdown file, or it, it would just be out of sight, out of mind, and I'd always be like, I'd know that that file was there, but I'd never use it. So this way, I have the tab open. It's costing me resources. I mean, though it doesn't matter that much to me. I I can you know it it's a it's a cost kind of thing where I can kind of feel like I have these things there and, and as when I close an application or I close a tab because I did the video, it's just kind of like knocking it off a to do list and it's it's very kind of rewarding. It's definitely not a workflow that's for everybody because I know that it bothers people that or people here are like you've had a, you've had tabs open for three years like. Yeah, I really, really have. I do the same thing for like stuff that I want to read. So if there's an article, like I've used things like Pocket before. I have a Pocket account. There's stuff in my Pocket account from for like from like 15 years ago that I've never read because I don't go into the Pocket. I you know like I have Pocket on my phone now. I'll save an article to Pocket on my phone. 
I'll never see that article again because I'm never going into Pocket to go read it. So yeah. I, by having it in a, in a tab, I at least have it in my face, and there's a much better chance of me actually, you know, either doing the video or reading the article or yeah. whatever. Just... Yeah, I, I get it. I was just I was curious about it. I was laughing at my wife because she puts stuff over here. Like it's she stopped doing it, but for like the longest time, she put it over here. Like you have to do this, so she put it because she would think that it would be in my face, and. I'd like oh, yeah, probably five minutes. So I was like, if you put it there, I'll never see it again. <laughs> it was right there. Just put it yeah. out. Yeah, it's, it's gotta be in this, front of this me. whole area. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I just find mentally it doesn't exist. So you put it there, and that's the best way to make sure that I will never do it. So so now it's like now it's like kids' pictures and yeah, yeah. whatever. Because she did. She's like, oh, like, it won't work. He's not gonna see it. The amount of tabs that I have is kind of like. I mean, it's become a meme at this point. The people who store all of their stuff on the desktop and icons and stuff. I'm basically yeah. that guy, but for tabs, you know. <laughs> yeah, my desktop, my my desktop is clean. I don't have anything. Yeah. I don't. It's a picture. I got a, I got my desktop picture that I want to look at. That's it. Everything else is tucked away in a little cranny. When I boot up in the morning, you know, when I open my lid, I just I just want to see the desktop and be chill. And desktop, so I, I get it. I understand. Desktop icons should be banned. Uh, yeah. I, I truly, honestly believe that they should not be something. Like, here's something I true. I, I very much agree with the GNOME guys on is that they should definitely. Uh, we're completely right in making it so that you had to uh, work around that in order to, to use them. Um, but uh, that's mostly because I'm very. I mean, you guys all probably saw the 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 home the home directory video I just did. I want my my everything organized every, every file and directory exactly where it is and, and yes i hoard tabs but guys the amount of organ the reason why i like vivaldi so much is because i can organize them like crazy so i have categories yeah. of of group of tab groups so i have yeah. one for distros i have one for apps all these things and they and that's within a workspace called ideas and it's just very organized so, so and my file system is exactly the same way the people who put their shit on the desktop drive me nuts because none of it's organized it's like like my my mother does this right and it <laughs> drives me I see think of a video I see think of a video i know i see I people at work that do you, that it's just crazy you should have oh, seen man. me back when i was a windows user because i'd usually have like half my desktop with icons but they were organized oh, yeah. i would have like this corner's for games this corner's for files this one's for game launchers <laughs> But well, it's such, yeah. it's such a thing that Apple created those stacks things. So like I don't know if it was this version of Mac OS, but the, or the previous one, where basically what they'll do is they'll gr group everything with a similar file type automatically for you by default. So you, if you have a whole bunch, if you have a bunch of pictures, it's going to automatically put them in a stack, and, if, and then you click on it, it will like expand out with a fancy animation or whatever. But Apparently, Apple users are the worst at this because they they created a mechanism to organize things for those people, and uh, I guess God bless those guys because they're doing God's work. But <laughs> just don't put don't yeah. put anything on there. It's, it's my, just uh, drive me nuts. My father in law is uh, he lives with me. Uh, he's eighty, and he's got a desktop, and he's pretty he's a pretty sharp guy uh, for being eighty, but he's not a computer guy at all. Uh, at all, at all. So, but he uses Windows and he uses Chrome because I can't get him to switch, and that's just what he's doing. And he doesn't always remember how bookmarks work, but he can always figure out how to save the HTML page. So when you look at his desktop, it's just little that's Chrome cool. logos everywhere, <laughs> and it's full of just these little chrome logos and then to watch him find something like he literally just has his mouse and he's like looking goes down another row i want to pull my hair out every time i'm like you know there's better ways to do it he's like yeah hey, you showed me but this is how i do it hold on i'm gonna open this for you hold on let me get it here a second is it this one no 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 is it this one oh it just it drives me nuts the chrome icons yeah. everywhere i my friend he he does the thing of hoarding tabs as well, but he has it completely unorganized in Opera GX of all browsers. <laughs> um, he, I think I Pro think strats. the last time we counted it, he had over five hundred tabs between five different windows and no workspaces. 
What in the cornbread hell? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> what in the cornbread hell? <laughs> so Opera I'm, has worked. But, but all of the memory he's saving with Opera GX. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, really? got this, yeah. Opera he's got GX speed boost on, man. Speed boost on. <laughs> right. Not affected at all. <laughs> God, that was a, th that was a thing. Opera Chrome going, hey, Chrome, you're on a diet compared to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chrome, you're looking thick, girl. <laughs> I, I can I can see the amount of tabs I have open right now. Um, it's 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 worse probably than most here. Uh, in my Brave right now, I have 162, and in my Firefox, it's about and that one it comes out like probably like a couple years worth of stuff in there, and that one is like uh, 2,100 something. What? No, so, yeah, <laughs> this is a lot. Screenshotter doesn't exist. I, I, okay. I don't believe you. Yeah, I, I, was, I don't I, understand I you. Like, I get okay. Matt's point of view. I so like you guys ever seen this video? It's so funny, and it, it has a funny thing with icons on this up at some point. So it, it reminded me of this. I, yeah, I get Matt's I take where he's like saving. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry. But yeah, uh, no, it's one of those where like, I get Matt's workflow because he's like putting it in his face, but it's a nice organized groups. How in the cornbread hell can you have that many tabs organized? For the sake of like Dougie there, like how do you have that many tabs organized? He doesn't have have, have that many. They're tabs not organized. organized. They're, they're not absolutely. organized. That's the thing. Like, uh, well, how the 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 Brave browser? They're 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 mostly recent stuff. It's like I have like the manuscripts I want to steal. I have videos about cool stuff by um, uh, Linux Dabbler open. I have what is this? Um, a cool thing that you can self-host on your website oh, or yeah. discover other similar website thing. I have other people's website. I have LF open. What is this Reddit thing I have open here? Um, how can I animate? Uh, I, I guess a thing, a, a thing if I'm using a, an awesome thing, awesome window manager thing. Over here I have a video about Vim from 11 years ago, but it's probably still worse. Um, I, I don't thing? know. Uh, I have a... a a 12 year old program about uh, recording in Linux events here open over here. I have a Git T about a minimal screen editor fork of classic SE. I have, I just have a bunch of shit and I don't, I don't put it where I need, I need to. And it just yeah. falls out. Or, I, I, should... four four tabs. I don't have any tabs, man. <laughs> yeah. So I, just need to, I just need to, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, there's a the happy medium days, have, been... from having no tabs. Which I don't yeah. understand, and and then Nuggy Bus who has four thousand tabs. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I, I, I think I'm I'm in the happy medium. Like my hundred and twenty don't look so yep. bad at the moment. Yeah. I, 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 I just I question open tabs when I should put them in the right text file. That's what I should do because well, I, I that's what I've been doing in the past couple of days. I've been looking at the tabs and reducing them and closing everything that's not required. Like everything that's so, like meh, I just close it. And then everything that's kind of cool, I try to make. For example, I, I did a, um, today I did a, a, a markdown file called uh, uh, File Browsers or whatever, file, file Explorer. And I just have a bunch of File Explorer. I have LF Ranger, the usual one, but also a bunch of other cool stuff that I found. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to make a list, whatever. That's well, what I should be doing. I should be doing lists in text one, files. One thing. One thing that kept me on Windows for a long time, like as a, as my daily driver, I had to have it, is I was using OneNote. I had to have it for work. Like OneNote was my only thing that kept me there for the longest. Time. I tried all yep. the workarounds I could do. I needed OneNote, and then I found I like man, I'll just use Markdown files or whatever. And then it was such a pain in the ass. But I found uh, download as Markdown. It's an extension you can get in any browser. Firefox, Chrome, anything Chromium based or Firefox, or I think it even has one for Safari, which I don't know about, but it'll just spit out whatever page you're on as a markdown file. Mm. And it just shoots it right to your download folder. That's neat. So what I ended up doing now for my system, so I don't have tabs, is if I find something, maybe I need this, maybe I don't, I'm not sure, and I'm not actively working with it. I just, I want to download as a markdown, and it gives you a little prompt, just like clip to OneNote, where you can add your little note at the top. Add your little note, mark down it, shoots it into the download folder, and then once a week, 
because once a week I got to go in or I downloaded something just now and I got to find it. I need it right this second. I'm like, holy shit, there's a lot of stuff in my downloads folder. So now I got to clean it out and then I move it around. Right oh, now yeah, I'm using I Obsidian for my note. So yeah. now I got to organize it. And that also gives me a chance to like, hey, do I really need this? Do I care? Well, maybe I don't. But in my Obsidian vault, I have an archive folder. It's like we're just toss junk. And then it's now it's searchable. So I don't lose my tab. I don't lose it. You know, whatever. I mean, I have a ton of shit in there that I probably should get rid of, but I don't know. Maybe I'll need it later. But that's how I say organized, though, is I because I I'm I'll go somewhere and I like that little oh look a squirrel like that's me real easy. Yeah. So I need I need a way to just like oh that's cool, but that's a later cool. <laughs> that's not right yeah. now. I gotta yeah. work. I gotta work. So I want to look at that later. I don't know. Maybe look into something like I mean, whatever system you use. If Matt's uh, if Matt's uh, you know four bajillion tabs open is working for him, then go ahead, do it. I got no complaints about it. But if it's if it's draining your system or you or you're not getting it done, then maybe look at something like that. Yeah, so I don't, I I don't necessarily, the... I don't necessarily think that a bunch of tabs is really that much of a problem because most modern browsers have a nice tab search. So you just yeah. you just like Control Shift A on Chrome or percent t or whatever it is on firefox or whatever there's usually a yeah. kind of search you can just search for whatever you have open yeah i'm sure it's not a i'm sure it's not a problem 10 years ago like maybe resources and stuff but everything well, goes to sleep now i'd be very right. no see i do the thing is guys is that even firefox does put tabs to sleep it still has gigantic memory usage just like every other browser out there but even with tabs closed you're going to end up using quite a bit of memory and stuff. And, and it's not even the memory that is going to get you. It's going to be the processes that it opens, even for closed tabs. So it... It, 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 it can't be that bad. Well, we well, if, you're a, a, if you're on a potato like I am, it probably matters. But well, Are we going to start a web browser temperance movement? Uh, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm just, just the guy that tell just... all of you to use cute browser and be done. <laughs> what do you say, W? I was going to say, I end up, I used to do tabs, especially like through college and whatnot. I would just have garbage loads of tabs in Chrome and whatnot. And while I still haven't moved away from Chrome yet, I'm, I'm working on that, but give me a couple of years. Uh, I'm stubborn. Don't want um, to rush these up, things. We'll just wait till Firefox dies, then I'll switch. <laughs> well, like, it's not bad. Like, here's the worst part. I do use Firefox too. And it's because it's Google Chrome is gone. so trash when downloading like half the f software or like if I go to download a distro, it'll just block it for no reason, but it doesn't pop up and tell me it blocks it. It just says, no, nah, not doing that. So then I have to grab the link, open up Firefox, and then download it in Firefox half the time. Just use Brave. Um, it's basically Chrome. Just my own rant. You could, you yeah. could use it. I mean, they have download man. I always wonder why people use download managers, but a lot of people use download managers exactly for that reason, because then they can fully have the downloads right in their face. Um, yeah, you just get right around it. You, you guys only obviously uh, W uses more than one for different reasons. You guys use like a dedicated browser. This is this is my browser. This is the hill I'm gonna die on. I use just this one. The I have. <laughs> yeah, I know you've I talked about Vivaldi that you love it, which I looked at it the other day because I don't. I still don't have a decent email client that I like, um, data or desktop, local. Um, but I look at Vivaldi, and I might give it a shot. But like I have Chrome, Chromium, Firefox. I've been looking at LibreWolf. I have multiple. Um, I have installed. Edge right now. I use Edge. Been using Edge this week. Um, I, I do. No, no, I'm sorry. Second. I'm sorry. You got to get off the podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, I, that's just too much right. Microsoft for me. I'm sorry. Uh, you gotta, you gotta have I, just an answer. It's getting his IE seven in a Vista VM. That's what. That's what <laughs> yeah. uh, oh that's, man, IE seven was bad. In my in my defense, uh, in my defense, I work and there's certain things that I have to use that for whatever reason, because Microsoft are. Uh, I think we're family friendly here, so I don't think I'm going to say it out loud. But you guys get the idea about what kind of people Microsoft are. Uh, they make my life extreme. I don't work for them, but I. They make my life extremely difficult unless I am as plugged into the ecosystem as possible. I'm the same if way with get, Google, yep. unfortunately. Yeah, if they get if they get too like, wait a minute, this guy's, wait a minute, what is this guy doing? He might be like one of those deplorable people we don't like. They will mess my shit up. So I have to, in certain instances, which is where Edge comes in, uh, I have to have an actual Visual Studio account and be on an Edge browser and 
use my single sign on and I have the little authenticator thing on my phone or else I get kicked out and blacklisted. Now I can't make money. So I have yeah. multiple browsers installed, but I only use Vivaldi. So I have right now I have I have Vivaldi, I have Florp, I have Chromium, I have Firefox. So I have four installed for sure. Maybe more than that. But the only one that I use is is Vivaldi. Uh, Florp, I think, could be like the browser of the future for me because it's very close to what Vivaldi offers, but it's not quite there yet. I if they continue to, to develop that, I may end up being able to switch to it. But we'll see because it's going to have to have better workspace and tab stack support and right now it just doesn't and they're rewriting the workspace thing but from what i hear it's just going to be basically tab groups which isn't quite all the way where i need to go i don't know i've i've switched back and forth between browsers like crazy if you, i mean you guys watch my channel any amount of time you know that i've had a very interesting and long long running browser like hopping session there there was one point there where i was making a i switched web browsers video like three times in six months it was nuts maybe even yeah. weeks um i i've done that but vivaldi for me just works with the way that, that for for that i have workflow it bugs me though because so the i the ceo guy that is actually in charge of vivaldi follows me on mastodon and one of these days i'm going to gather the courage to actually confront that guy for having the audacity in his bio to say i support open web standards and open open source t uh, technology like dude your browser's proprietary what are you doing <laughs> like i don't understand how can you say that you're you're an open source advocate and and support open standards standards and then have a, pr a proprietary browser it doesn't make sense to me now he's it's, not an absolutist I, yeah so I don't know. Know. even if i remember right it's not all proprietary it's just the ui right yeah am i thinking yeah. the wrong yeah. yeah so what I think because... is, right, it's just chrome with a skin on it so the only part that they've made closed source is their branding you know what yeah I mean? it, it, the thing is important that. the thing is different um yeah I think the thing with Vivaldi it is, yeah, it's the UI. I think it was TechLore who ended up doing an interview with the CEO and actually kind of got that answered. Yeah, it's just the skin, right? That's well, the, the brand. Well, yeah, there, it's, it's, it? it's so that people couldn't just totally lift their design and then just run away with it saying it's theirs. Which no one would do. I mean... <laughs> I, yeah, they were... Money? How, what's their business model? They, I think they, they get paid by Microsoft. Games. What? They get paid by Microsoft. Search? Just, just you put Bing by default? Yeah, Bing Bing's by default in, in Vivaldi. Obviously uh... that's the first thing that I change. But yeah, they I don't know I yep. don't know how much money they get because they're not as transparent about it as Mozilla, obviously, because they're not, you know. Well a if foundation. they made a good browser and they, they like worked with the community, there would be no reason why there would be a fork that would end up being more popular. They could just like Firefox, they could that there is like well, very popular. Uh, it's not in that in that kind of scenario, it's not that I'm gonna go fork Vivaldi and steal all of the Vivaldi users. I'm gonna go fork Vivaldi and steal Microsoft. That's who they're protecting themselves against. It's not that somebody's gonna steal their skin and put it on another browser and then all the users are gonna go away. They're protecting their business model where they're locked in with Microsoft money. Well the, also on their website they argue that by being partially proprietary there specifically when it comes to their ui is that they're protecting their ability to have brand uh, a very unique brand so they don't have everyone you you open up vivaldi you know that it's vivaldi because it looks like vivaldi and they their argument is that if someone were able to fork it because it's open source they could use that and then there would be brand confusion because there's basically two browsers that look exactly the same but we know absolutely know that that's not true because F firefox has a ton of different forks out there nobody firefox cares did so much redesign to look like chrome because they're yeah. dying yeah so I mean, it's just exactly. like like no nobody confuses libre wolf for Firefox, because nobody in the grand scheme of thing, nobody uses LibreWolf. Now, granted, exactly, you could you could argue that they don't want to emulate Firefox because Firefox is dying and, and it's going to be dead very soon. Um, maybe that's the reason. Emulating like old school, uh, old school um, Opera, which was actually pretty cool, and well, they're adding like a bunch of stuff on top of it. The the, the really guy unique. who started Opera runs Vivaldi. 
they're, they're the same yeah. dude. So, um, not, not that surprising that they've emulated opera quite a bit. Thank God they haven't put in the speed booster. I'm just, <laughs> that'd be a, a push <laughs> too far. If the speed booster comes on there, I'm, I'm going to leave because that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like everybody. <laughs> You don't want well, a boost Matt, button. You Matt? might need to save two percent of your CPU for your web browser. Well, well, they, and they did it. That their speed in Opera, their speed boost first came out when, like, dial-up was still very prevalent in a lot of places, even here in the United States. And it was it was meant to, their slogan at the time. Well, not the slogan, but their their claim at the time was that it made dial-up faster. And I was like, please, come on. No, you can't make dial up faster. There's literally a technological limit on the modem. It is going yeah. to go as fast as it can go. That's it. Yeah. It's not going to go any faster. Your web browser technology is not going to make it any faster. And that that bugged me. That's bugged me for twenty years. Um, okay. If, okay. If that was like that back then, I could see where maybe back then there were some of the older systems were like, yeah, maybe their CPUs were limiting the down or like the, some of the dial up speeds, but. I mm -hmm. kind of doubt, and that's just that would be a computer problem at I that just, point. But maybe no, I'm, 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 I'm with like, Matt. I'm not buying it. Download more yeah. RAM so your computer's I mean, faster. You know, <laughs> that's you the best. one maybe hypothetical it was I can come up no. with so in my head. I actually did find a way to download more RAM. Okay. So what you yeah. do is you sign up for Google Drive and you mount it as swap space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, somebody did a video no, on that. Slow. And the latency is like, oh, it's it's only thirty four. <laughs> It's only 50. You better have an amazing internet, yeah. Somebody tell Jake yeah. that. Direct fiber line to Google. <laughs> All right, I, I wonder here who's going to be brave enough. Tell Jake to do that just because that'd be funny as hell. <laughs> I would think Josh would do that. I mean, not Google, but like would use like a drive service as swap. Right. His, his would have something to do with like there'd be tail scale involved and maybe Nginx. All these, all these technologies that he's always into, and then, then he'd figure out how to do it th through all those things. So he could do it from basically anywhere in the world. Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, he'd be sharing his his home server RAM with his laptop, but they're not in the same location. <laughs> that I mean, that sounds fun. cool, but completely unnecessary. That'd be fun. Yeah, fun I'd watch the video. <laughs> yeah, I would. Exactly. <laughs> I'd watch the video. I mean, there's a lot of things Josh does that I'm like, why are you doing this, bro? Like, it's entertaining, but, like, what's the point here? <laughs> Josh is awesome, but he does Josh things in complicated did. ways. Like, yeah. he, he's a very complicated setup, and that's one of the reasons why he can't stay in a distro, because his setup is so weird that no distro is built to accommodate it. He, that's why That's why Gen 2 is the best distro for him, because he can he can tailor his his distro towards his setup but he he likes to hop he's a he's a hopper um oh yeah which is fine i used to be a hopper and then i found the best distro in the world open susa you became a gecko yeah i'm still a hopper i still jump around a little bit like i said earlier like probably a fedora guy but because i've been used to that the most over the last couple of years but like right now i'm on pop because i'm uh i'm really interested in uh rust and I'm really interested in the Cosmic Desktop. So I've been daily driving it to look at everything, and I want to contribute to the Cosmic Project. So I don't know. I actually want to put Cosmic on top of Fedora, but I want to see what that looks like. When it also, I'm curious when it comes out. When it comes out, uh, when the Alpha comes out, um, I'm probably going to work on that as a project. I don't think I'm going to make a spin, but I want to I wanna see what that looks like. And so like, I'm, so like I said, I'm interested in Rust. Um, but I like it. I still jump around a lot, though. But or it's just like I actually hate gnome, but uh, I don't know. KDE, KDE and Fedora never works on my machines. So I always got some kind of problem. I'm always, but I'm always on a potato. There's a there's a yeah. KDE is always anymore. flaky for me. There's a dearth yeah, of desktop environments out there if you don't want to use GNOME or, or or KDE. I mean, Budgie exists, but Budgie doesn't know what the hell it's doing. XFC is good. And probably the best alternative to both of them, but a lot of people don't like the the workflow of of of, of XFCE. There's LX Cube, yeah. but nobody uses it, and it's not you know it's not well developed. The, it, there's you know Cinnamon, but that thing is so tied to Mint 
I mean, yes, you can use cinnamon on Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever, but it fe- not the same. It, it's just, I was trying yeah. to use cinnamon on Slackware. Yeah. Yeah, I was using, using it for a long time. time. Did you say you're using Cinnamon on Slackware, or you did use Cinnamon on Slack, Slackware, Bob? I'm saying I could. There's the Cinnamon Slack builds. <laughs> How, okay, so, hold on a second. <laughs> How old is the package? Let's just, just be honest about it. Is it pretty new? I have no idea. I've not looked. <laughs> uh, I'd be interesting to find out what the version number there, <laughs> there is. Well, right. I know it one I should time... look into it next time I'm in there. I'm on Windows right now just because I got to jump in with a community night for some streams, but... What were you going to say, W? I was going to say, I know at one time, and don't ask me why I know this, um, I was playing around with FreeBSD like a year and a half ago, and I'm fairly certain at one time they had a Cinnamon build in FreeBSD. I'm, sh- I'm sure they do. It, yeah. It, I think it's horribly broken now. Like, the last time I tried to install it, well, to be fair, I couldn't configure X to actually work on FreeBSD, but I was in over my head at that point, so I just gave up. Yeah. Cinnamon what you is, think of- is a fine Sorry. distro. Cinnamon is a fine desktop environment, but it's just if I'm going to use something that's XFC, like I'm just going to use XFC. That's that's the way that it's I look at it. It's just just I, I'm, there's something about the way Cinnamon works that just doesn't really jive with me, and it feels like yeah, it does a lot of things that XFC does, and it does a lot of things that GNOME do, and, and it just feels like a, a desktop environment that doesn't have its own identity. It's tried to do too many things from two different different places, and it just bugs me quite a lot. But, and you guys know my reputation with Linux Mint, I do think that yeah. it fits. I do think that it fits Mint's ethos quite well, and they've done a good job of tying Cinnamon and and Mint together. Um, and they, they've just done a, a good job there. And it, it feels like if they would, I don't know, it just feel, if it, it, it feels like that'd be a good project for, to be on a rolling release if they were more active and, and larger, you know, where it was kind of more in the forefront and you were, t- because you don't hear some, I mean, cinnamon is like the, probably the third most popular desktop environment out there. Probably. I mean, I don't, I don't know any of the numbers, but it just feels like. All you hear about is XFC, or excuse me, Gnome and KDE. All the rest of them are just also RANs for the most part. And it's, 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 just, yes, we have selection, but all of the rest, I mean, they're just, it feels like they don't have the, the community cachet, if you will, that the, the two big boys have. And, and that's disappointing for me because I, I want there to be more uh, options. I, I, I think that Gnome kind of steals all the oxygen out of the room, right? And what's little bit is left is is done by, um, thing. Um, go ahead, Dennis. We can't hear you, bro. Yo, broken. Mic muted or something. Yeah, either you're muted or your your pipe wire is broken. Uh, <laughs> just blame um, pipe wire. I will add in for now while he's looking while he's trying to fix that. Uh, what's the current version of Cinnamon? Um, six, I think. Because they just uh, did 21.3. This is LMDE. I just got the latest update. CSB yeah, 6. is right 0. up to date at 6.0, Matt. So oh, I, okay. I could have straight up up-to-date cinnamon on Slack. I, 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 my heart, mental way. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just so shocked by that. Um, that Because that means there's someone out there that uses Slackware that keeps that package up-to-date. That yeah. is that. Uh, so so I love Slackware still, and Boomer are very up-to-date. Let me, let me, let me so, tell you yeah. that right now. Okay, like nine people talked all at the same time, so I have 14, no clue what anybody so. just said. So, <laughs> oh. Dennis, did yeah, you get no, your did you get like... your audio fixed? This mic's no, not. we it doesn't seem so. Yeah, we can't hear you, man. Uh, you're but definitely on Linux. We know nothing. you're. We know you're on Linux because your audio is not working. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but what do you think about Linux? No, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I landed on Cinnamon awesome. back in like. 2017 2016 somewhere in there and at the time i was moving off windows 7 and the workflow just clicked for me because i've just always worked in that style like windows xp windows 7 style workflow and i've just never left i just just like this is what i like this is what i want to use i'm stubborn so i just keep using it and whatnot um and i have xfc on a few machines like i was stupid i bought one of these cheap best buy like hundred dollar laptops just to like screw around with and whatnot. I put XFCE on that, but 
you know, otherwise most of my stuff like this old laptop is so running you're, cinnamon just fine. And you're you're the the token cinnamon user on on the on the low. I'm a mint shell. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I have, get, uh, get off my I have podcast. <laughs> yeah. I have LMD. Yeah, I've got LMD on a uh, a tiny HP like 14 or whatever. That thing's got to be 10 years old. It runs like a champ. I mean, it's a little piece of garbage. It's got four. Uh, so, I don't remember the specs on it, but it's ten years old. And it was a cheap one when I got it, but it runs. Uh, yeah, it runs man, just fine. Uh, yeah, that's actually the one that I take with me uh, when I gotta go places, and I might get mugged or I'm gonna drop it. I don't it have or... problems <laughs> with Mint. I just I have problems with their developers. N Nuggy Bus, you asked me what my opinion on Mate was. I like Mate, uh, but I can never get it to run anything. It's the crashiest desktop outside of XFC or outside of KDE. That I've ever used. It, for whatever reason, no matter what computer I'm on, it just crashes. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It can be me. weird. Yeah. Um. I've got Mint Mate on a X1 Carbon over here. That it it, it sort of works, but it's it's weird sometimes. I have a. F it would not surprise me now that Martin Wimpress has moved on to NixOS and is no longer as involved. Doesn't feel as as involved with the Mate project as it was, it wouldn't surprise me if Mate kind of fades into the background. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like the Gnome 2 guys have finally decided that Gnome 3, or or they found alternatives at least to uh, that suit their workflow a little bit. And and while there are still Mate people out there, they it's it's very quiet right on that end. Oh, hey! Hey! So I had the wrong audio selected. That was my problem. Okay. I'm um, Dennis Snowboard. We, we can do um, some real bad feedback there, Dennis. Yeah, that, that is Oh, is it too loud? Yeah, and, and we can hear ourselves. That sounds like ear rape. Then I'll say a for next time. I'm gonna mute you and until you get that fixed, okay? You're, you're murdering our ears. Just raise your hand again if you think you get it fixed. All right, um, Linux audio, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we we all know that feeling. Like uh, just Jesus, um, yeah. So Mate has that thing where it just kind of feels like it's kind of fading in the background it'd be interesting to see where it goes because correct me if i'm wrong it doesn't really feel like they have a plan for wayland whatsoever i mean maybe that's come out and i just haven't seen it um but i mean even xfc has a plan for wayland guys even xfc does um obviously cinnamon does budgie budgie has a plan but they won't stick to the plan because they never stick to any of the plans that they come up with um so I don't trust their plans whatsoever, but they have a plan. I, I haven't seen a, a plan from Mate yet, but maybe there is one, and I just haven't, uh, I haven't missed it. Bob? Yeah, I was just so looking kind of into do. that, and the, right here on the Mate wiki, there's a Wayland piece here, and that almost all of it's finished. Oh, really? That surprises yeah. me a lot. Um, wow. Okay, I guess I'm completely wrong yeah, about I'll, that. Then I'll drop the link in the I'll drop the link in the log chat. Well, and I don't know if it's if the, with their window manager, if it's not like Cinnamon where they forked it off of um, Gnome's window manager. And so they kind of, I think, indirectly able to kind of ride the coattails a lot because like Cinnamon Wayland was like they just flicked a switch on. And I'm like, sure, it crashes and it has a lot of problems. But like I was shocked, like when Nick from the Linux experiment ran, I'm like, really, you can already game on Wayland on Cinnamon. That's that's crazy. Yeah. I would get into Wayland myself, but welcome to using NVIDIA and having a card that wasn't super popular. What card do you have? Uh, the 1660 Ti. That was at the time of like the 26, like the 20 series for the RTX cards. Okay. Those are so bad. It was always just kind of the lower middle end area that never really sees a lot of limelight. Well, I should just say middle, not kind of the middle end either way, but. Yeah. I don't know. I'll be yeah. curious how Wayland treats 10 series cards because I've got a 1070 in my video editing rig and just 
in the next few years, it'll be curious to see how 10 series gets treated. Because I know on Windows, 10 series is kind of getting treated pretty poorly at this point. Well, it's going to get treated poorly to... on here, too, because it doesn't support Wayland hardly at all. So a, a, all all of NVIDIA's, you know, attempts to make Wayland work on their cards have, has all been focused on the RTX stuff. And even the RTX 20 series is, is kind of being left in the in the in the dust. So if you don't have a I mean, modern game, version, might save us. I mean, I, the the with, with their stuff being more open source now than it was before, maybe some of the older stuff will get done. But more likely, what they'll do is they'll be able to take some of that stuff and put it into Nuovo, Nuevo, Nuovo, whatever the hell it's called. Um, Nuvo. 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 That's it. Thank you. NBK, um, yeah. I know start with an N, and my Spanish is shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah. um but anyway may, maybe some of that open source stuff that nvidia has shared will 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 continue to filter down to that and some of the older stuff will actually work on wayland but i don't it's going to be a long long process it's one of the reasons why I've, I've kind of been very outspoken about wayland not being ready yet because i mean linux is pro i i would most people who are running linux are running on hardware that's not Leading edge, they're running on a sixteen or, or uh, a 10, 1080 or a you know a nine seventy or something like that, or they have an old laptop that they're running on. I mean, ThinkPads are, are the thing. All of them are old, and you know, having to come up with a a, a piece of software that doesn't run really well on that older stuff kind of is going to leave quite a few people out. And, and that's one of the reasons why I've been so anti Wayland. Wayland also because it does stupid shit like not capturing screens properly still. Like, yeah, why are you doing this to me, Wayland? God damn. Well, and it's, it's hard because I have some older AMD hardware too. Like I have, it's in the other room, I guess. Uh, Latitude 6440 and it has, well, I actually got an HP here too. Has dedicated Radeon graphics, but it's an old Radeon HD series. And you try to run like Caden Live or something when you're on Wayland or whatnot, and like it will crash the display server. Like you won't believe. Caden Live on Wayland is still just it's really really not good. Like like the other day yesterday, I went. To, I guess it was two days ago. I went to order edit the video that I was going to post that evening, and for whatever reason, Caden Live had crashed. And you guys know when Caden Live crashed every once in a while, it'll pop up like Caden Live crashed. Would you like to reset your profile? And basically, it just completely yeah. resets the application. So I did that because you know I've done it many times before. It happens every once in a while. It's a Caden Live thing. The thing is, is that when I went opened up Caden Live again and wanted to actually move all the panels around where I needed them to go, at least on Hyperland, you can't move panels around. It won't let you. <laughs> like it, it, it will pull it out of the UI and then just leave it there. And it won't tweet it as floating, and you can't put it back. And then I, I was like, you know, that has to be like a Hyperland thing. But I went to uh, the Wayland version of Plasma, which I have installed, and that happened the exact same way. And this is a KDE application that doesn't work well in Wayland. Now, according to the somebody on Mastodon, they said it's because Qt5 just doesn't work well on Ma on Wayland. And that's the reason why they've been pushing Q uh, Qt6 and Plasma so hard to get to that point. So going so far as to, like you guys all know how much the Plasma guys really love their updates. Like they update a lot. They haven't mm -hmm. updated since 5.27. And that was well into last year. So you can, that's how important getting to 6 was for them. That they basically paused all updates on major versions and put started working on Plasma 6. And it's all because of Wayland. Um, so it, it's, I have many thoughts on Wayland, uh, many of them still very, very negative. Uh, I like Hyperland though, a lot. And if I didn't like Hyperland, I, I probably would have switched back from, back to X Monad by now, but I, I do really like Hyperland a lot, but there's still just some things that just, they don't work. It's just, I'm sorry. They just don't work. Yeah. There's still a lot with Wayland that I'm like, we've still got a road to climb up on to get to a point where everything pretty much just works you know it is old oh no, we have to ship it right now yeah yeah I, I deal with that at work trust me oh we got to ship it right now when it's not ready and doesn't work and what and i'm not saying wayland doesn't work i've i've got ubuntu on a surface go and i've been messing with it now for like two or three weeks 
and it runs flawlessly. I haven't had any issues with Wayland apps. I run Discord on it. Discord seems to be work just fine. Um, some of the scaling gets a little weird because X Wayland doesn't seem to handle scaling as well as some things. Um, but like, you know, a large generic stuff that I do, like run Thunderbird, run stuff like that, works okay. You know, browse the internet and whatnot. Um, but you know, like as soon as I pull up OBS or as soon as I pull up something, you know, more task heavy, and then it's just a problem. Is it so way we still have a road to go on? Is it way then like ten years old? Technically, yes. Yeah, technically. That, yeah, it's I, been in development since two thousand eight, but it wasn't ready until like recently. Yeah, I believe I believe that. I'm with uh I always forget everybody's name. Never knew. War Thunder W. Uh I am in the same boat. We're like, hey, you just it's not ready. I don't care. Ship it. It's broken. Ship it. Don't complain it. You know, whatever, ship it. We work out as we go. That's agile. Um it's it, not. It's not, but whatever. That's what I get told all the time. It's it's agile. That's how we do it here now. Continuous improvement. That's fine. But at some point you do got to say, like, no, we we either have a product or we don't. So if you do have a product that's half ass viable, yeah, you gotta ship it. And you got to listen to the complaints and be, everything in open source moves a little bit slower and everything that has to do with Linux moves a little bit slower because not only do you have a committee of like 10 project managers because it's Linux, we have like what 1.2 million. <laughs> Everybody's, everybody, everybody in the community, there's I don't everyone know many... has their own way of doing things. Everyone wants their voice to be heard. Everyone wants their way of doing things to be the way of doing things and when they don't get their way they fork it and then we have five different projects that all are doing the exact same thing That's it's insane. great but there's a down there's many downsides to that what wayland desperately needs is to be one solitary thing and th once they become one solitary thing they need to have a beta branch where they can do their stuff they can break the things if they need to break it and mm -hmm. you can just run like an LTS version of Wayland and, you know, just run it and know that your thing's not working. But they did the exact same thing with Pipeware. So basically the same guys are working on both projects. They all work for the same, a lot of them anyway, all work for Red Hat, right? And when mm -hmm. they did, when they were doing the Pipewire thing, and the Pipewire transition was really happening like about two years ago or so, everybody was choosing Pipewire as the default you know, Ubuntu did it, and OpenSUSE did it, and Fedora obviously did it long and long ago because that's what Fedora does. Uh, you know, you know, uh, they they did the exact same thing. They basically treated the entire community as beta testers. You know, you're going to use this, and then every time they pushed the thing out, they they, they were running that thing. Especially if you're running Fedora, you you were basically running the Git version of Pipewire, and you were getting updates to that thing every single day, and they were breaking it a lot. Like a lot, and they're doing the exact. They do a, a lot with Wayland. It's 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 slowed down and become much more stable now, but a year ago, it wasn't stable. Like even on GNOME, even on KDE, there were there was many problems, and and uh, the only reason why those desktop environments were able to maintain a semblance of stability is because they put so much work into tailoring their version of Wayland to work for their desktop environment. It's not the version of Wayland. It's a version of Wayland. I and mean, we have multiple things. Right. The thing is, just like, I was talking about this to Brody the other night. Like, there's, Wayland is not just one solitary thing. It's one of the reasons why we have, you know, just to go back to the window manager thing, we have Sway, which does WL Roots. We have Hyperland, which does its own thing and it uses its own portal and stuff and like that. And they're all doing Wayland, but they're all different things very rarely are they intercompatible and it's the same thing like you a lot of the stuff that kd is doing the gnome guys are doing something completely different in their own different way and they're not mesh they're not meshing and it's we always talk about linux fragmentation wayland is like the biggest fragmentation we've ever seen before and that's worrying not because people i mean most of us on, on, on this call here are 
very enthusiastic uh, nerds and we like to try out new things and it's fine. So we switch back and forth between different things a lot. And for us, it's a big problem. But for most people, you know, they're just going to use KDE or they're just going to use GNOME. That's what they use. They're never going to worry about those incompatibilities. But when they eventually do end up coming in, into contact with some of those things, it would cause a problem. And it's I think it's hard for developers because they, they have to focus on targeting something that isn't there really so they they, they have they, they have this target of wayland when wayland doesn't really exist in a singular form it, it exists in a multitude of different forms and get you know if, if you target towards running on kde plasma with wayland maybe your application will work just fine but it also may not then work on gnome because of the different ways they do things. And you have to kind of be able to tailor it to both. It's kind of like trying to support many different distros all at once, only this is just, you know, a different thing. And it's really, you know, the way that it is. So, I don't know. Oh, you're right. But then it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be Linux if it, was any, if it was happening any differently. Yeah. If something like just came out tomorrow and it was smooth, I would be suspicious as fuck. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, uh, no, no. If Wayland was its own thing, or was one singular thing, let's just call it, I don't know, System D, there'd be a whole group of people who say, damn it, I hate System D. Let me use Run It. Let me use OpenRC. Let me use this via Init. Well, you know? There's already people like this, like me. I don't like Wayland. Well, I mean, look at the package format wars that we deal with. <laughs> you could write a movie <laughs> saga just over like all the different package formats and I like see it now all the Snap issues flat packs <laughs> <coughs> excuse me yeah yeah snap yep. flat packs the winner of that okay then now, now you're gonna now instead of just being creative we're just gonna be boring i'm gonna call it snap v flat pack to electric boogaloo <laughs> uh, it has yeah. a, all right like, wait rob snyder's gonna I, be in that movie though right <laughs> yeah i, I, I had, I was all in on flat packs and I didn't mess with anything. Else. Like, I didn't even really look at app images or snaps. I watch videos and stuff. I never tried them. Like, just I pretty much have all my stuff. I don't, I'm not really looking for new stuff all the time. But then somebody sent me an app image for Wave Terminal. Uh, and it's awesome, but it's an app image. So I'm going to have to use it. Isn't w the Wave Terminal that one that's like built in Electron or something? Yes. Which I know yeah. people, some people have very strong opinions about that, but it is awesome. You're basically, it is but it's an app image, but it's snappy on my machine, and it is awesome. You're basically using Google Chrome as your terminal emulator, by the way. <laughs> Just say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I also use I also used uh, uh, Microsoft Edge earlier today to get some work done. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. You, you, if you guys are gonna boot me from if you guys are gonna boot me from the server, that's fine. But no, yeah, no. no, it is. It I, is. Uh, and it, and what it is, what it is, how I just, how I would describe it to somebody is it's the VS Code for terminals. It's the same workflow. It's the same idea. It has the same aesthetic. Uh, it's just yeah. It, I, it, it is what it is. But I'm in VS Code all day, so I made a video yeah. about it not too long ago. So there's Did you? A, yeah. There's a new uh, there's a new terminal emulator called Prompt that yeah. um that george castro pointed me towards it's basically the distro box lover's dream it integrates with your distro boxes so that it, you can basically set it so it will when you boot into a certain profile it will automatically switch to that particular distro box and you will automatically just in that machine and it runs flawlessly and awesome unfortunately that's cool DistroBox has not been working well on OpenSUSE lately, and I don't know what's going on with that. But um, if, if you're into DistroBox, it's called Prompt. I, I if I can get it to, get DistroBox to work, I'll be making a video about it. But um, until that day, that sounds real happens. cool. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's so good. I love cool tools like that. You know, I may not use them every day, but like, It's just like you did that one software spotlight for like a GUI tool to configure DistroBox, which I'm glad it did work for you because I probably will install it on my machine back there because I've been wanting to play with DistroBox and get into some of that. I had a lot of people on that in on that video talk about why would you want to use it because it only half you know, like half configures um, DistroBox and you you can't actually use your DistroBoxes from it. But the I, I think that there's a lot of people who don't want to touch their distro box configuration at all in the terminal and they want to 
do it from the GUI. I don't, I don't really have a particular feeling when it comes to GUI via terminal, one way or the other. I, I particularly prefer the terminal, but then I consider it, you know, nerdy, and I like that. Um, but I know that there's a lot of terminal users out there like, oh my god, you're using a GUI tool. How dare you? You can do that in the terminal so much easier. It's all about efficiency, man. Like, take your well, if you know what you're doing, sure. Take your pocket protector and hmm. shove it up your ass. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. People have different workflows, and that's perfectly okay. Yeah, yeah the efficient efficiency is the key. I've seen uh, different ways to do different things, but it's the efficiency. I'm I'm a big proponent of that, but you, a couple of mouse clicks, it, whatever. It, I don't care. Well, sometimes I, I just I have to get to the end. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I need a GUI to show me options that I don't necessarily know. And yeah, sometimes I can flip through man pages and whatnot in the terminal and, and figure out what I'm missing. But, you know, long, long time ago, I had a friend who was telling me the same thing about, oh, you got to be in the terminal and terminal. And then we were pair programming and, oh, you just got to do this. And he was a Vim user. And, uh, and that guy had a cheat sheet next to him that he was like copying and pasting from. Copying and pasting into the terminal, I'm like, okay, that's fine, but you're not really, you just looked over on your cheat sheet, like I looked over and looked at the menu to see which my options were. Yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> oh, no, it's, I look cooler. Well, you probably do look cooler than me, well, but yeah. But it, but it got his work it. done. He got his work done, so I'm not mad at him. I just kind of laughed because he was trying to take the high road with me, and it's like, well, no. You, we, we, oh, can, I, we can all admit that we've seen man pages that are just bad. Like seriously yeah. bad. You, you can you can tell that the person may be a fantastic developer. Maybe they're the best developer in the entire world, but they couldn't write a man page to es to escape a paper bag. It's it's just yeah. it's just some some and, and a lot of a lot of developers are like that. They just can't write documentation. Either either they have no interest in writing documentation, or they're the they're the they're the Haskell guys. <laughs> they can write documentation, oh. but they think everyone's a Haskell developer. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes documentation is written by the lowest guy on the pole. Yep. Well, Just they should pay that guy more and and maybe offer him some uh, English classes. They're getting him yeah. usually where I'm where I'm at, the lowest guy on the pole is still making pretty good, but he might not understand what the software does. He went to school for it. He codes. Kinda. He doesn't might not necessarily understand what the whole thing does. Yeah. Senior senior guys who would write you an excellent man page. And that guy don't write man pages. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah well, we we all know where man pages are gonna go though. I mean uh, we're we're gonna point chat GPT this is my program, write me a man page, and then there's my man page. I mean that, that's the future of man pages. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, if it would work, I there's stuff out there that'll tell you that or do that in self documenting. If it did work, I'd do it. I'd press a little button, not write a man page again for the rest of my life. But it's I'm, I'm surprised. And if that does if that does happen, ever nobody's gonna use man page anymore because there'd be such garbage. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I have very strong opinions on AI, so I probably shouldn't start. Yeah, I, I, I don't care if you want to write stuff like that, but actually audit it afterwards. Uh, read it, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> Nuggy, literally Nuggy, read it. What were you gonna say, Nuggy? Uh, yeah, um, I, I the other day I had like a like an idea, but I didn't finish it. But basically, I had an idea of uh, using a script to extract the comments above all of the key bindings um, uh, in my iTree config and turn it into like a, a markdown document. Of like uh, basically like uh, here is this keybind that does that, and I haven't finished it yet, but that's kind of cool. Like that's kind of the idea of like self-documenting, of like if I put the right comments above every line of like uh, key bindings in my iFig config, I could make like a manual out of it. So the the config file could generate a uh, a manual for my uh, window manager environment. That's kind of a cool idea. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. Keep so, going with it. Don't so, give up on it. Keep going with it. So even to this day, the first thing that I do in a configuration file is delete all the comments. 
so uh, <laughs> the, what? One the, so one of the reasons why I at first I really hated the Kitty Terminal emulator is because their documentation is all shoved in the configuration file. Every single bit of their documentation is right in there, and it's and if you don't know what you're doing, that's fine. But it bugged the shit out of me because, <laughs> because it's like. 5,000 lines, 4,592 of it is it all only comments. like one comment per line. Okay. Um, and, and it's, it, bu it Minimum, bugged me, max. but also in, in like my, in like my, all, all my dot files, I very rarely comment things. And I know as someone who's a, you know, public figure, <laughs> Which is just the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, You're a star now, Matt. I know. I You're should, a star. I should, Content I should... creator. Content creator. No, no. <laughs> influencer, dude. I'm an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> that's right you're a linux influencer yeah, that's horrible I, I probably wouldn't claim that title either and nobody wants to be an influencer <laughs> uh it's 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 gone out of out of the whatever but um i i know as someone who has other people who use my dot files you know i should comment my stuff and say you know this is what it does and and then i should actually go on to github and write a readme so that people know how to do things but goodness i'm that guy who i can do a good solid you know dot file for dwm or any suckless tool or whatever but i am not commenting it if you want to know what it does you will figure it out yourself <laughs> i i'm i'm horrible at it just uh, mainly because comments bug me and I think one of the reasons why, and this is going to be some of the stupid, most superficial thing you've ever heard in your life, is that a lot of the things that I use on a daily basis don't do a good job of, of using the gray color. And when you, most comments appear in gray, so I can't read them because my eyes are shit. And that bugs me. So it's just easier for me to get rid of them. And that way I get rid of the blank space. And I have, That's I have, valid. and I have this thing where I try to, as much as possible, at least when I can, create a, a configuration file that is as small as possible. So at one point, my i3 configuration file was 12 lines long. That's how, that's the, that was the entire configuration file. Now I had some source things in there, so I had rules in another one that was like three or four lines long, and I sourced XXHKD, but the main configuration file was 12 lines long, and it was awesome and glorious and the, the nerdiest thing ever but anybody who tried to use that thing was probably lost because <laughs> you could because it was just one source to include file after another and there were different paths and stuff so uh I, I'm, I'm weird i guess is the bottom line to that uh the the gray comments i've i've had to use uh the id and stuff my color scheme is specifically so that i can read it it's easy for me to read i don't care what anybody else looks at or care it doesn't matter i gotta be able to read it i like comments because i'm gonna go back and forget what i did two weeks ago so i gotta have the comments but if it's a you know if you can understand it that's great but i also have other people read my stuff too so you, on your track or you have other people looking at your stuff if you comment it you're still gonna get dumbass questions but if you comment it uh you get fewer dumbass questions so i do both because other people read my stuff and hopefully i'm kind of diminishing the flow of people coming to ask me what I meant or why does this look like this? Uh, and then also because two weeks from now, I'm not going to remember what I did. I'm, I'm trying to protect future me is what I'm saying. I'm protection, protecting future me from me because I will <laughs> I'll forget. Okay. What, before we come to the end of this and I have to hop out of here, which is going to happen in the next half an hour. So Jake, sell us on the tkg kernel please would you please sell us on the kernel because we, we we can't have you on the the lug without you trying to sell us on a custom kernel it just can't happen it's against the rules so the floor uh, is the floor is yours all right um oh yeah so obviously it's it's designed for anybody who's running arch first you can use it on any other distribution they have a script for it but it's designed with arch in mind um honestly i love it it's very simple you just use make package to build the kernel um, you can go in, you can configure the kernel using like menu config and config anything like that. If you want to, uh, you can totally skip that step too, and just have it compiled as a generic kernel, you know, using your existing configuration. Uh, but honestly, I can't, you know, brag about it enough. I, I get so much performance out of it. I use it on my Plex server. And normally when I try to watch content on my TV, you know, like every 10, 15 seconds, they start buffering again. When I use the TKG kernel, this doesn't happen. It's like it just ekes out, you know, just that little bit of performance that picks it right up. 
So now you're going to try to make me use it on OpenSUSE. Did you, did you and Sprungles ever, did you and Jonathan ever get it working on OpenSUSE ever? No, no. I think he ended up switching to Fedora, actually. <laughs> so he abandoned the best distro ever just so he could use a, a custom kernel. You are uh, very persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> and I can be when I want to be. You're not going to get me off from OpenSUSE. Uh, I think that um, what I think there are a couple custom kernels in the Open Build service. I don't know how up to date they are though. Is the problem? Like, it, it, mm -hmm. very, like the yeah, Lickrick is in there. How you pronounce it? Um, and, and then Zen is in there. But I don't like I said. I don't know how up to date they are. And it'd be like adding a custom kernel from a PPA. Which doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, <laughs> it just yeah. like it just doesn't sound like a good idea because like that thing's never going to get updated again, and you just know it's never going to get updated again. And it's a kernel, so if the guy did have you know nefarious intent, they're going to have some very uh, interesting access to your computer. So I was like, I don't know if I, I don't know. Uh, so I'd, I'd be yeah. very worried about that. I don't know. Oh. So, so I'm unfortunately the, the TKG kernel is still not going to be for me, but it's, it sounds awesome. And and, and I, I switch to Oberon, I'll try it out. Oh, one of these days, I'll get Matt to switch, you know, once he reads through everything and sees there's no tracking in it. <laughs> well, hey, get it to work on OpenSUSE and, and have a source package that I can trust, and I would try it. But I don't think that OpenSUSE is really meant for custom kernels, to be honest with you. Although they do offer previous versions of the linux kernel i was reading this today you can if you want to pin other kernels and they offer in tumbleweed different branches for older kernels um including the lts versions so they obviously have the functionality of using different kernels um mm. but they don't for whatever reason doing that on your own seems to be almost impossible for whatever reason Every, everyone's everyone who's tried has completely failed, um, which is weird. You wouldn't think that it'd be that hard, really, to be honest with you. It's just building all, all yeah, the It's got to be something with their build system, then. Something that they tweaked or changed that just doesn't work like any other distro. I'm going to blame it on Zipper. It almost has Where to be. <laughs> Where is this custom kernel? Can I go see it? Uh, the the TKG kernel, it's on GitHub. Uh, the Frog and Family. Frog and Family. I think I've seen their logo. Do they have a really cool logo? Uh, it's a frog. Hmm. It's pretty cool, then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have a vague recollection of seeing their logo. I don't know why that stuck with me out of all the things. Um, yeah, so custom kernels. Uh, I, I still get comments on that video I did where I called you out. <laughs> As it, every once in a while, I was like, who's this Jake guy? And what was hilarious is that I said people come and buy and, and talk to Jake, and then the people actually stop by, join the server to, to talk to you about the custom kernel. It was hilarious. It was the best thing ever. After you released that video, there have been like 10 people that week that hit me up just out of the blue, just, you know, total strangers. Like, oh, hey, can you help me with this thing? Well, how about this? I got a question about that. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have asked first other than just saying, hey, Jake's the guy to go to if you want to run the TKG kernel. He's the personal support system for everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, probably should have asked. That's okay. It's uh, uh, It'll fade. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's the best thing ever. All right. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about this evening was, what was it? I had it written down somewhere, but as usual, I probably should have put it in a tab. Then I would have lost it. Where did I put it? Oh, there was one other thing. That in I a tab, it's all the way in the back. Uh, no, it would be perfectly organized in the ideas folder, and and then it would be in its own tab stack. Um, but no, uh, I guess I can mumble around. We can mumble around. Um... Well, you want? I can't remember. So anybody else has something else that you wanted to transition? Well, we talk about what we are going to talk because uh, you you're saying you're going to have a subject next uh, log. Yeah. Um. So Fraggle offered a list of of topics let me see if i can scroll back to the chat here and find this because mention them and see what we feel like talking about all right so he has topics of, yeah so performance tuning in linux so i don't i'm assuming that's some of these are very broad so performance memory profiling uh these are things that he used in something web development uh application development we could talk about packaging formats if we wanted to to get 
uh, snap versus flat pack for a little while. We could do that next time. Um, of course, I've done that many times on the channel. We could do talk about privacy. Uh, Linux. We just did the Linux kernel. So <laughs> we probably could do a whole thing on it, I'm sure. Uh, open source programming, de DevOps, uh, war stories. Oh, we that's, a, that's a good good one where we could talk about some of the things that have gone horribly wrong. Uh, we did that on the, the, the main podcast, but we could talk about that. That's a good one. Um, and, and then what we could do is similar to... You know, what we could do is open up... There's a channel in the Discord just for the podcast... Just to to, suge to to suggest topics, it's called pot podcast topics. If you guys want to have to in the future, just leave a a topic in there. Just put lug in the title, uh, so we know that it's for the lug. We could do that and just use the same channel because I'm not creating another channel. To do the, the the servers are so totally bloated with the channels at the moment. Um, we could do that. Um, also, we could do. We, I talked about doing the. Like a um, like a, a a distro, we could do that at one point. So if we if there was like a distro that we wanted to work, like I've I've been wanting to use Venom for a while. Like Fraggle has been using Venom for a long time, and I, and he keeps talking about oh this thing the most thing awesome ever. Um, and we could do something like that. Um, where we would basically all agree. You don't have to use it on hardware. You'd use it in like a VM or whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be for very long. Just install it, and we could if you had something to say about it, you could then we could get do that. We could do that. Um, we could do the same things with pieces of, of software. We could, I, I really like to sit down and just nerd out on notes for like a, a whole lug. Just sit here and talk about note taking applications because my note taking situation, as I'll say in the video that I, I'll post on Sunday, is a mess. I'm using Google Keep and have for 10 years. It's the worst note taking experience you'll ever find, yet I've been using it. So, um, uh, doing a whole episode on note taking things, doing a, an entire episode on maybe the, the matrix and social media alternatives for open source stuff is a possibility for us to do. So, so I have a lot of different ideas and it's going to be way better guys. If it's not just me coming up with ideas, cause, uh, I will come up with the same game. ideas over and over again. So, um, I'm game. I'll throw some, I'll throw sure. some stuff in there on the, uh, on the topics thing. Um, I like Fraggle's suggestions. Um, I like the idea of uh, looking at the uh, individual uh, distributions. I'm always curious. Uh, I have a lot of uh, channels that I look at, but not so many. It's, they're always talking about like the desktop. They're not talking about like when they're doing a uh, distro review. Like it's this is Gnome's implementation number 45. There's less about what actually makes this distribution different than. You know, what are they adding to on top? What are they getting a little bit deeper yeah. into? I think you guys have a lot of well, opinions most, on that. Most distro is literally just a skin, like a different desktop with a different theme. Like if we're talking about the actual distro out there, there's like thousand millions. Of, I don't know. I know, but most there's of them layers. Are, don't, under... actually, don't actually have anything going. You know, well, there's layers. Theme. There's layers under that needs that, and you mm -hmm. guys have a lot of experience because you yeah. distro hop all the time. I know Matt distro hops a lot all the time. Matt's not just a the rice makes it different. He knows a lot more. He was he's always the Linux noob, but uh yeah, okay. I mean Matt knows a lot about kernel noobs. Yeah, Matt knows a lot about general, what's going on. Like there, there's probably oh. like a hundred distro that's actually different. Maybe like a thousand distro I, that's actually different. And then the million of distro that's out there are actually well, just I know, skin. but what I'm get what I'm getting at is Matt knows what the actual different part is and could articulate it. I'd like to see that. Well yeah we can we can we can definitely get into like what makes uh like a good offshoot distro kind of thing. We can, we can just yeah. dis discuss that. Um, because I, I do have like, cause Nuggy is right in that, that there are quite a few distros out there that are literally are just like arch Linux with a rice on them or, or, yep. or whatever. There are, there are quite a few out there that are very popular like that, but then you also have things like Endeavor OS, which is arch Linux, but it also does a whole bunch of different things. It, it's, we, I got a little bit of time. We can talk a little bit about this now, but we can expand on it in, a, in another lug. I I think that the like here's a prime example just just to talk about it. MX Linux gets a lot of shit for for tro for trolling DistroWatch, but it's a fantastic distribution. But what makes MX Linux different? It's basically Debian. It's it uses all the things Debian does. It 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 pulls out System D and puts in. Run it, open it, I think. 
run it. Run it, yeah. Yeah, it's run it. Okay, so, so they pull out, put a different in a system in it so that, that there's one thing that they do differently. But you can use system D. It comes with a system D uh, boot option. Uh, but what really okay. really turns them around is the tools that they've created. So it's one, it's one of the things that I really enjoy about Linux Mint. <laughs> Good Lord. I'm going to say something positive about Linux Mint. They, they, no. they, they've done a fantastic job of creating tools that make Linux make good. So same with Zorn. I have so many problems with the way Zorn does their, their ISOs and the way they do their, um, you know, trying to make money with their pro version just drives me bonkers, but I understand that, you know, they need to make money, whatever. It's not for me, but what, but they've created tools that make their distribution special. And because you can you can tell the, the the maintainers who have put effort into making their thing, and you can also tell the the maintainers who have basically just taken an ISO and added a few app, few in, pre-installed applications. You you can just tell. Um, Zero Linux. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on that. Um, <laughs> so uh, Steve, love you guy. I'm just gonna put you out there. Um. It was a rice, and, and Steve knows that. And Steve, Steve, Steve knows that it was that it was just a, a rice on top of Arch Linux. That's why he's creating a tool to do it. He, like, he completely mm -hmm. understands. Um, so, so, but there's there's ones like that, and there's many of them out there that are like that. And there's no, the, the thing is that there's nothing wrong with doing that because most people, most distro maintainers aren't going out there trying to create the next Endeavor or you know Ubuntu or whatever. They're doing it because that's what they use and they created this for them and then they shared it online and a whole bunch of people took it and decided to use it. And, you know, that's what, that's how uh, like Redcore, the, the guy behind Redcore, he created it because he wanted to make Gen 2 easier to install for himself and shared it with it. And then it kind of blew up to being the project that it is. And then a lot of them have happened like that. Like Redcore is another example where they've done things that... You know, they basically taken a distribution that is hard to install for most people and made it easy to install. And they've created tools along the lines to make it easy to maintain. Like um, Sisyphus is a horrendous name for a package manager. It's it's the worst, but it's all, but it, it's it's a good package manager because it allows you to, you know, basically get rid of all of the random flags you have to t attach on to emerge in order to actually use it that nobody re unless you're a hardcore gen 2 guy knows what any of those things mean um and you don't have to worry isn't, about isn't sisyphus the guy that had to push the boulder up the hill it is yes um it's also if you're dyslexic like i am harder than shit to spell um, it I was is gonna say, really bad to spell. Like I, I can't spell it. It's, I put the letters in or, different orders every single time. Half the time, not even starting with S. Like, like, like I know it starts with an S, but I can't, I can't type it. That's the re one of the reasons why I hate the name so much. Is because I, it just all the letters just all over the place. E e even with open dyslexia, as the font set half the time in the terminal, um, I can't read it. Like, can't read it. Can't type it. I don't. That I don't think that's. Alias it. I don't well, think I that's a just, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's a just you problem, Matt. I think that's probably an everybody problem. <laughs> don't feel bad. Yeah, it's just not a good. But it's things like that that I think set distros apart is the tools that they create and the different. I think that I like that a lot of distros have different ways of doing things and they're willing to take things in a different way and, and try to do them better than the parent distro. So like. Again, good lord, uh, Linux Mint did. A, <laughs> they didn't like the way the Ubuntu did things, so they created their own thing, and and they, they didn't like they didn't like, they didn't like GNOME too. They, so that they had Mate, but Mate was never going to be good enough or well developed enough from them. So they created Cinnamon, and they did all these things. Like it's a prime example of a, the proper way of forking something, and a good reason why you want to fork something and, and create something else. So, um, okay. yeah. I, I think that'd be a, a, a good broad topic that we could do. And I think something like that, it's probably the best topics that we'll have are things where they'll be able to branch off into many different tangents 
right? So yeah, we might start talking about like the the best Linux distros, right? We could. <laughs> it seems like the the ultimate clickbait video, but we could talk about the best Linux distros. But I guarantee by the end of it, we're going to be talking about you know random distro number five, um, and, and all the cool things that it does. You know. Yeah. Um, so, I like yeah. I like those open ended uh this stuff. That's why I came back is because last time I was here, this is the only time we I is this the second one you guys did? This is the second uh, one. Or third yeah, second one. So I was here for the first one, but I wasn't even sure if I was gonna stay. Excuse me. But I had so much fun because you guys were talking about all kinds of shit and we went all over the place, random. Uh I just had a lot of fun. That's why I came back for this mm -hmm. one. I don't uh I like the topic idea. I don't uh I'm not interested in a script like oh. this is a meet. I have a, a meeting where you got where you got ten minutes. Here's your ten minutes, guy. Go. I don't want to do that. I'll leave. Your, but your, if, yeah. Yours knows exactly what I do when I do scripts. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. I, I mean, I'm I'm down for whatever you said earlier. You're going to record this. I don't care. That's fine. You have my permission. I don't think you need it, but you can. Uh, I just I like that. I do like the topic idea that we can put a, a poll in there about what we're going to talk about. It'll just be then, a uh, uh, kickstarting kind of thing where we. Yeah, that's fine. You know. I think that's I think that's a great idea. We did pretty good today with. Uh, I got to jump off here in a minute, but yeah, I think we did pretty done. good today. Just staying organic with the conversation but i do like i do like the idea like hey here's some ideas well we won't even we have a topic about. every single time oh yeah a, a lot of times it'll be just like that like i'm just we're just sitting in a room and we'll talk about linux anyways uh yeah that's it for i think i think i'm going to top off as well uh, any anybody who wants to stay in around the to chat with each other you're welcome to do so the lug voice is always open by the way if you guys just randomly want to hop into a, a discord thing dennis if you ever decide to get your uh you know you probably should just switch to windows i'm just um, audio on linux is, oh is don't terrible. be mean man oh, oh man, man. <laughs> hey, oh that's dennis i sent you uh i sent you a message uh oh. <laughs> and i sent you a friend request i think you saw it okay cool um i'm around tomorrow um i'm chicago time so central time um, but I'm around pretty much tomorrow, whatever. DM me. You should just be able to. I, I was new to Discord. I'm still new to Discord. Um, but yeah, hit me up tomorrow and we'll do a voice chat and I'll help you get your shit straight. Yeah. And, and don't yeah, don't no feel don't okay. feel bad about it because um, everybody has audio problems. Like, seriously, it's a, it's a, it's a mean Absolutely. for reason. Anyways, uh, next one will be uh, the second Tuesday, I think. Second Thursday of February. Uh, I will send out a notification, everything, so that everybody knows. And uh, I'll talk to you guys then. We had a wonderful time. So thanks for everybody for joining me. Um, again, have a wonderful weekend and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Take it easy, bro. See you. Take care. Bye. Good stuff. <laughs>